Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Esports Breakdown. We are going to be focusing on Counter Strike tonight. I am uh, Chris, also known as Hold the Door DFS on FSI and Twitter. Uh, today we're gonna tonight we're gonna look at uh, the three game slate that we have ready for tomorrow. I'm actually gonna focus on the three game slate, but also give you uh, some of my thoughts if you're only playing the two game slate, just because. Uh, some of you may not be awake for the 6 a.m. Central Lock, which you really can put your lineup set ahead of time for Counter-Strike. We rarely have had any issues where a player has been ruled out. Uh, that did happen one time for North, and now Jumpy, the coach, has been playing for them. Since then, uh, the player cannot return without penalty until uh, this event is over. So we are going to take a look first at uh, the first game of the slate between Simon and Windstrike. We are looking at basically a pick em here. Uh, so I think when you, when you see that the odds are that close, as we saw today with the games that had pretty close odds before the match, that there's a great chance that it goes three maps. Uh, FaZe and, and Ninja and Pajamas is a great example. Um, and, and one thing just from a, from a macro perspective when you're thinking about building for uh, Counter-Strike lineups, uh, the three maps is super important for players that you think are going to perform above what they would get for not playing the third map. So, for example, um, today for people who punted with Olaf, which uh, kind of bailed himself out with an ace in, the, in overtime uh, at Mirage, but he – wasn't really going to make value if if they he a also didn't get that ace but because the match went longer the players in that same game that are more talented than him like Plopsky and Nico and Brokey those people will start to uh, widen the gap on on their point discrepancy where if every player on phase all got 20 points for map three that means Olaf is performing equally to them in that third map, which would not have happened. It didn't happen. Uh, like I said, Olaf's day was really saved by the ace uh, at Mirage, um, which is a little bit bitter to me, uh, considering I lost by a half point in a head to head because of that. Um, so, and then on my perspective, I took Plopsky, uh, the best player for uh, NIP. Um, so then at just, at, you know, he was more expensive, but, that match going three maps was going to continue to widen the gap between those two players uh, rather than a phase getting the sweep. So let's dive into the first match. Uh, uh, we have, like I said, Windstrike and Simon. Pretty high chance of three maps here. I don't see how you don't kind of predict three maps with it being basically a pick 'em. Um, I think the value is really on Windstrike. Um, Elian or Elian uh, is 9,000. Uh, I think he's definitely their best player by far, but I do feel like he's a little bit overpriced uh, compared to the other studs and the guys that are around him. Um, if it goes three maps, he certainly will probably eclipse 60, 70 points. Um, so I definitely can see you making a case for him here. I think he'll be actually lower owned just because um, not as big of a name. He's not on, it's not a favorite. It's basically a pick em. Um, but if you really do think that it goes three maps, um, he should be performing top one or two for his team on all three maps. Um, going down on win strike to Hobbit, who also sports above uh, a 0.7 uh, kill per round. Um, he's actually has 0.73 in the last three months. Um, Bondike and, and Lackey are also value plays. Bondike at uh, 6,600 and Lackey at 6,000. Uh, there is a little bit of a narrative here. If you go on to Simon's side, uh, Nober, I think is how you pronounce his name. Uh, it was is actually on loan from Windstrike. He played with Windstrike, uh, I think, earlier this fall and then in the previous year and then has now been loaned uh, to Simon. Uh, and I'm not really sure how long that lasts. But so there's a little bit of a narrative there. I think uh, – he has been underperforming based on kind of his long-term talent and value. So I think he is definitely viable here, but Kios and Moo have been the top players lately for Simon. 
Uh, again, if you want a game stack, it goes three maps, get a couple overtimes. I think a lot of these players can really hit value. I just don't see them being as popular in cash games due to uh, the names and the other players that we have on the slate. So that's where I'm going to kind of leave that game off and I'm going to jump over to uh, one of the, my favorite games here, um, NIP and Vitality. Uh, whenever you have Vitality on the slate, the first thing you're looking at is Zaiwu and Zaiwu at 9,600. Uh, if we take a look, I think it does have his last game. Yeah, it does have his last game against uh, God Sent on here, a match in which he was pretty average. Uh, they swept, so he got an extra 20 points, um, you know, 45 points between the first two maps. Uh, I, mean, I would say that was probably slightly under average, maybe, you know, just it really depends. And it seems like in a game like this, where actually Vitality comes in as an underdog, uh, with Ninja in Pajamas being minus 150. Uh, I think that he definitely has to carry the team. And I want to show you just one thing on hltv.org if you have not done it. So I'm bringing up Vitality here. And uh, when I want to look at the team as a whole, um, I'm just in their team page. I'm going to scroll down here to stats. And when I go down to stats, I'm going to click all stats for Vitality. Here's a nice, also a nice kind of visual on map picks. You know, you can see that they're uh, pretty strong in the last three months at Vertigo um, and, you know, not so good at a place like Nuke. Uh, so if I go to all stats for Vitality, and then I'm going to click on players. Uh, and I'm going to change, I don't really like the all time feature because they don't all play with each other for their whole career, obviously. So let's first go back to, let's go to the last six months. Um, and you'll see uh, these four have played together. Um, and it's pretty obvious Zaiwu is um, almost always, uh, you know, going to be in that positive uh, kill to death ratio, while a lot of his teammates are typically in the negative. And if I go to the last three months, uh, we don't really say that, see that big of a change in the number. The last month. Uh, again, similar thing. He's the only guy support, sporting a, um, you know, a positive uh, kill to death ratio for a team uh, that's pretty highly world ranked. But another thing that you can do here is uh, if you click on lineups, you can click replace with contact, replace contacts with lineup. So then now when we go to it, it's going to give me. Uh, just when these guys have been playing together, which uh, is the, really the only the last month anyway. Um, but it, it, for the team that has maybe a bigger sample size of players that have swapped out or played together, if you use that replace contact or with lineup with contacts, then it only uses the players that are active on their team. So I think, uh, and that's really important because when players change teams, they also change roles. Um, so uh, back to our DK breakdown here. Uh, Zaiwu obviously is going to be, I think, pretty popular here just because there's enough value everywhere else. Um, and I think people go to him over uh, Elian for a win strike. Um, my, my favorite play of the slate is the next one. Uh, way, 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 way too cheap at uh, 7,200 is Plopsky. I think he'll be pretty chalky. It'll be in uh, all of my cash game lineups at least. He's also a great captain selection, I think, just because of the cheap price tag with a huge upside. They're minus 150. Uh, obviously, they got a good chance to here at going three maps uh, in which uh, he would certainly eclipse uh, that 70 to potentially 80 point threshold. Um, and he is sporting, you know, well, I think uh, over uh, 0.7, I think maybe a 0.77 kill per round in the last three months. So awesome value there. I think if you go down, the next two uh, NIP players are also really good values. Uh, Knock at 7,000 and Rez at 6,800. All these can be you good game stack. Um, I think when you're thinking about roster construction, it's really important to think about um, if you are going to play players from the same game. Um, you obviously you want it three maps, but do know that there is some negative correlation. Uh, for example, I saw somebody's lineup today that had three G2 and one uh, Australis. I, I don't think that really works in your favor unless 
unless G2 does really well on three maps, but still you have, I, I just, I'd never really believed in going to three one. I just don't think there's enough upside in an optimal lineup. And especially when you take G2, who was a pretty big underdog in that game uh, and them getting swept two zero, you're basically, you're dead for last in cash. Um, the rest of the guys for Vitality, as I already showed you, I, I don't really like. I mean, they almost should be cheaper than this because there's really a good chance that they're going to perform in that 30 to 40 point range unless, you know, and, and sometimes one of them pops off, but it's really tough to predict who it's going to be when Zaiwu is kind of taking, taking everything himself. Uh, Lecro is also another solid value and twist. Uh, I was, I was kind of hoping we get Lecro even cheaper than that, considering how the team is. Rarely do you see the most expensive player being only $800 more than the cheapest player on the same roster. So I think that kind of shows you the value, but also um, I wish I would have liked to see Lecro be a little bit cheaper um, to kind of shove in some of those G2 players. Uh, that's, so that, that's really it for this game. Really target Zaiwu, Plapski, Nock, Rez. All of them are super valuable. Going down to Lecro for value. Uh, I, I'm not really touching any of the super cheap Vitality guys uh, tomorrow. All right, moving into our last game here. Should be kind of a fun one. Assuming that Heretics uh, performs well and keeps it competitive. Uh, G2 kind of coming off the loss today. Uh, they're going to really be looking to rebound, uh, but they also lost to North recently uh, with Jumpy playing the coach for North. So they're not really in the best form. So I, even that they are coming in here at minus 250, I don't feel overly confident in them, but I think the chalk will be G2 just because they're super soft in pricing. You know, normally a team that's minus 250, you're going to get their top two or three players uh, around 8,000 or higher, you know, depending on who they are. Um, Kenny S with the op is always a great play. Uh, you know, when I watched the match today, he didn't take it till like the eighth or ninth round um, at Vertigo, and that really cost them. Um, some of the buys that they did I, with G2 really ended up being pretty dismal for them in the end of that. And in, in certainly a map they could have won at uh, at vertigo um so kenny s hunter nexa are my top three targets obviously for g2 um a manic is super cheap 5400 him and olaf were the cheapest two on the slates today but i don't think uh he paid off his price tag at all just because uh they got swept um so i think he's a viable punt so i think that's kind of where uh, my slate is going to be decided if I am going to punt with him or Jax in order to get Zaiwu, or am I going to potentially fade Zaiwu in order to get all of Kenny S, Hunter, and Nexa if I play three from G2? I think uh, that's going to be where the slate gets determined a little bit. Um, I don't always love playing three from one team um, just because I think it does limit their upside, but and here, I think you can make a case for a two and a one, two G2 and one Heretics. I just think Heretics is too expensive. You know, they're a, one of the, they're the biggest underdog on the slate. And Maka is the most expensive by $600. Um, obviously, uh, Maka in the last game had two 30, 30 kill maps and, and crushed his value in only two maps. But I think it's really, and that was against North, 106 points. Yeah, you know, 61 kills. That was only two maps. So he has that upside, and I, and I think he's a great GPP option. I just find it really hard to pay um, $600 more than Zaiwu for him, uh, even paying, you know, you know, 1400 more than Kenny S here uh, as an underdog I think is really hard to sell. Um, so low-owned GPP play, great. Um, I think maybe Lucky would be my 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 one-off for Heretics here. Navera just seems a little bit too expensive, again, relative to Hunter and Nexa. I think sometimes when you think about prices, you have to be, A, think about if they're favorites or not, think about if it's going three maps, and then also compare it to the rest of the slate. You know, Navera at 7,800 last slate was super appealing against North because they were favored. He's the same price against G2 where he's an underdog and it's, it, it's not a super friendly, you know, game environment to be that big of an underdog and to hold the same price that you did last week. 
Um, so that's kind of what I'm, that's kind of where I'm leaning here this game, try to get two or three of them, um, depending on how many uh, probably Ninja and Pajamas, and if you're potentially taking a wind strike player. I think if you do take a wind strike, one or two there, that probably pulls one away from your G2 lineup and potentially one from uh, NIP if you're gonna go two or three there. Um, so that's all I got for our classic slate. I do wanna just dip a little bit into Showdown. Um, if you've been playing Counter-Strike Showdown, it is a little bit different of a beast than when we get our normal uh, sports, other sports uh, that like MLB, NHL, um, some of the sports are have a lot of variants. Um, Counter-Strike doesn't seem like uh, there's enough differentiation in the pricing for, uh, there's not a lot of decisions people have to make. Um, today, for example, you could basically have played the top three Australia skies as long as you played somebody, you know, like uh, I think it was Jax or a Manic for, for G2. Um, otherwise, it was super easy to get everybody in. So here, um, again, Maca being the most expensive, they kind of take the pricing from Classic and just, you know, convert it into the showdown. There's not usually a lot of adjustments made. You see the same order of players. Um, so in this case, I think for sure I would be locking in um, Kenny uh, and either Hunter or Nexa, um, preferably all three, and then playing one Heretics, and that one Heretics being Maca. Um, and then depending on who you want to use for captain, uh, that would determine if you're able to get to Maca or need to go down to Nevera. I don't even know that there's a construction here that would even require you to get down to, uh, let's see, if I went Kenny S, and even if I went Nexa, and I went to Hunter, uh, you know, even with those three, uh, you know, I can get, I can get Maca really easily. Um, but if you want to use like Lucky, and then you want to upgrade Nexa to, you want Maca in the captain spot, you can still get Hunter too, if you want to go a 2-2 build. Um, so I think if you're, if you're going to use Maca at captain, that will limit you a little bit. Um, but I do think he has enough upside to carry the slate if heretics keep it competitive. So I think he is really a tough fade in the showdown format. But if you're going to fade him, uh, Nevera or Lucky would be my next heretics players uh, in uh, to consider. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. We are going to continue to roll out Counter-Strike videos uh, every slate, hopefully. And also, um, I want, uh, you can expect a Call of Duty uh, breakdown for next Friday, I believe is when the slate starts. Uh, we do have some Rocket League action tomorrow. I'm a little bit bitter about Rocket League uh, last uh, Tuesday, not, um, you know, the game being postponed cost me, you know, a decent chunk of change uh, after, uh, um, and just and just that whole debacle of, of if the game gets replayed in 24 hours, then they, they count it. That kind of goes the same with Counter-Strike. If somebody gets disconnected, and they are going to resume the game within 24 hours. Those stats will still count. Otherwise, they will close out, close out the slate. So um, hop over to FSI.com, FSIDFS.com, and you can join our Discord channel for free. we got a ton of free content there. Uh, KBO, um, you can go to our subscription plans here. And if you click on Quarantine Month, and you just click join now, that will give you a free VIP membership to all of our sports. We plan to keep running things for free until all the major sports come out. Uh, we'd love to have your support. Give us a like on this video, a subscribe to our channel. Uh, we are also available in our Discord channel to ask answer questions. Um, our experts are in, are in the rooms all the time. You can tag them with a question. You can direct message them. Um, we are really receptive to our customers in terms of responding. Uh, so I think uh, uh, that would be a great place for you to start to continue to build in your uh, DFS world. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Again, check out FSI. Feel free to shoot me any comments, any questions below. You can send me a message on Twitter. Um, again, I'm Hold the Door DFS uh, for FSI. Thank you.